3.8 billion people are living on less than $2 a day. That's roughly half the world's population. Our mission at Architecture for Humanity is to help improve their lives. My name is Cassie New, and I'm here on behalf of Architecture for Humanity Minnesota. Architecture for Humanity was founded in 1999 to promote design solutions to global, social, and humanitarian crises. We are architects, landscape architects, contractors, designers, who volunteer our time to something we all are passionate about. Now AFH chapters have over 4,000 members worldwide. In January of 2006, seven founding members of the Minnesota chapter joined together for monthly meetings at Anodyne Coffee Shop in South Minneapolis. Our first discussion, how could we use our design knowledge to help those affected by the tsunami? A connection was made with the Minnesota Sri Lanka Friendship Foundation and our first project began, a community center for displaced victims of the tsunami. Making changes about working together, connecting with others, and investigating ideas. Our initial project beca began because of our connection with the Friendship Foundation. Colin and Troy, here tonight, also members of AFH Minnesota, have spun off and started Solutions, the reason we're all here. It is all about linking up and sharing ideas. It's so much about sharing ideas that when Cameron Sinclair, founder of AFH International, was awarded the prestigious TED Prize, One Wish to Change the World, he chose the Open Architecture Network as his wish. The idea is a Creative Commons na Developing Nations license, sharing humanitarian ideas worldwide. Our projects are about responding to crisis through design. These natural disasters all are contributing to massive migrations and the need for ecological restoration and refugee sanctuaries, South Asian tsunami, Hurricane Katrina. As many as three and a half million people experience homelessness in a given year, 39% of the total homeless population are under the age of 18. We can help these people in small ways locally, like setting up a sleeping bag drive. We can help in bigger ways by designing a home for a New Orleans woman uprooted by Katrina. We're in Iraq. War in Afghanistan, war in the Democratic Republic of Congo, war in Somalia, genocide in Darfur. People are displaced every day by war. We can help make a difference in their lives by designing the places of medical care, the places of safety, the places of refuge. All of our clients come to us with valuable experiences and individual stories. Our designs are informed by their experiences, their program, their needs. We take this information and uncover the where, where the design may go. It all comes back to the people we are honoring. They are our clients. According to UNICEF, today there are over 20 million children who are currently displaced. Oftentimes, the most impacted of our clients are children. We were asked to design a medical center for women and children refugees in the Congo. To them and to all of our clients, we decided to adhere to certain design tenets. Let it be local. The ecological sensitivity of a place and the cultural integrity of a group of people are crucially linked. The power of a project comes from finding the roots of why and how a certain group of people exist, the land on which they live and the stories they ingrain in their children. Let it be appropriate. That means designing a renovation to a North Minneapolis center to truly fit the needs of the Minnesota Lao community. <coughs> Design is informed by what is intrinsically bound to a culture. We need to respond to that, respect it, and draw upon it. Let it be sustainable. Sustainability is not a green checklist. It is about creating a balance between what we build and what is naturally meant to be. Finding a bird's nest on the local clay tile of a newly constructed community center is a serendipitous happening. Being open to this may teach us how we can help foster sustainable outcomes. Design must be collaborative. Collaboration just makes things happen. Through the dedication of passionate people and a thoughtful design process, great projects are made. And through this process, we have remain, remained committed to certain design philosophies. We are first and foremost designing for people. They are the reason AFH exists. They are the reason we are all here tonight. The South Asian tsunami impacted nine countries leaving more than 150,000 people dead and a further 4 million forced to leave their homes, forced from their homes. Our global design response is about people. 
We are designing with pride and not pity. Respect for a group of people is the first approach to design. We work with both local and international groups to help them with design solutions to help their communities. Their knowledge and commitment to the community is what create the project. We serve as their resource along the way. So as we lay seed to our passions, we are calling on ourselves to become engaged. Engagement in your own beliefs fosters change. You might be amazed at how many people share an idea with you. It is simply about finding those people by engaging yourself. As designers, we're often told to not be political. Forget this. Be passionate about what you believe and raise awareness to the issue. If each person in this room were to call attention to an issue he or she believes in, the power and longevity of that idea is yet expanded. There is a reason AFH has grown. The message is spread every day by more and more people who believe in it. It starts in a room with people who share ideas and a vision, something that goes beyond our individual needs. Design can improve the lives of individual people and the well-being of communities without resources. Can you start an architectural revolution? We think so. A credo that many of us here hold dear to our hearts Whatever it is, do it like you give a damn. As we like to say at AFH, and to quote Cameron Sinclair's book, design like you give a damn.